down the marginal gains as your vermilion moniker. Are you sick of that? Um, yeah, it's certainly um, it's certainly something that seems to have stuck, and certainly something that um, seems you know people think it's the it's it's all we've done, you know, when it when it's not. So it's, it's a small part. It was a it was an element of a much broader um, methodology or working working approach, really. But um, you know, my, the term itself, I'm I'm pretty sick of. But we're not sick of winning. And it helped us win, and we've, we've won a lot over the years. And um, so I think, uh, you know, for me, people, you know, have said, well, well, we tried it, we took it, we tried it, but it didn't work. It's, you know, it could be quite critical of it, but it, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, we're, we're here to perform, and it's helped our performance over the years. But it's not a, it's not the be all and end all. It's not a magic wand. It's just, a, it was a concept really, and, and and it was a concept about doing the details and the mindset of actually being bothered to do the little things really. But if, you, if the big things aren't in place, if you miss the fundamentals, it's not going to work anyway. So, you know, you've got to get your fundamental right and, and then go from there. So it's one of those things that um, when I, I remember sitting down and, and, and writing out for the first time when I was doing, I was doing a, a, a little presentation to the staff and I was trying to, trying to get across this concept of, of, of how we could approach it. And, and, and I wrote that. It was the aggregation of marginal gains I wrote down. And if I knew then that it would have been here now in the same way maybe I'd have written it different I don't know but you can't you can't go back and change can you how do you stay motivated now do you set new goals for yourself now experience and into your career what keeps you going um well I think I think the same as ever really I think I think you know I think I've, I've I've got a natural set point, I think, in terms of ambition and want to do things, want to achieve things that haven't been done before. And I've, I've always felt like that. I don't know why, but it's always been there. And that it's not something that sort of ebbs and flows. It's just kind of a, a setting that I seem to have. And I always, even now, I get excited about doing something that hasn't been done. And, and, and for all of the years of, um, of, of, of performance that we've had, it doesn't really have a cumulative effect. You know, it's not as if you build it up somewhere and... It's some, having some kind of impact. I'm still terrified. I hate, absolutely terrified of losing. Don't want to lose. It really scares me. But equally, um, it's the idea of doing something that hasn't been done before, and, and that level of ambition, and thinking about it in new or different ways, and a bit, you know, that's sort of like challenge people to be couldn't we be pioneers in something? You know, there's got to be something. Somebody's not doing that. Let's go and do it. You know, and I like that. That that keeps me. I don't know. It's, it's something that infuses me. It's something I like doing in my life. It's something that you know pervades my life really, and, and I just try and take that into my working environment. How, how would you describe your leadership style, and, and how has it evolved over your career? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it has evolved. There's no doubt about it, and um, I think age definitely, or experience, isn't it? You have different experiences, and, and, and you kind of reflect on those experiences, and you look back and you think, God, I've done something different, God, I've done it better, and try and listen to people and. Um, and I've time. I've, had, I've, I've fluctuated a little bit, I guess. I think in general, um, I've always liked um, the psychological component of, of sport, the human nature side of it. The why, you know, how do you get the best out of somebody? What kind of environment would you have to create for somebody to perform optimally? That's something to think about quite a lot. And I think that's that was very heavily influenced for me when I met uh, the psychiatrist Steve Peters, and we talked about that a lot. You know, how do you create that environment? And if you've got a model. To aim for, at least you've got something to, to try and, you know, benchmark and, and, and reference, if you like. So you're not just kind of making it up as you're going along. Um, and then I think, you know, I think then we went through a phase of um, becoming successful and trying to maintain that. You know, how to keep on being successful. And then maybe, I think, um, I think I've had a little spell where maybe I became a little bit more challenging. I think in terms of, you know, standards and doing the little things and making sure we do pushing, pushing, pushing and I think you can do that to a point where it's you know, it's, it's kind of diminishing returns, you do it and it has a positive effect but you keep doing it too much and it actually pisses people off basically and you have a, a negative effect so getting that balance, and I've been, I've been both sides that's for sure <laughs> you know, and, and getting that balance right is something I think you learn over the years and um, I think as you get older you, you kind of think about, as everybody does the consequence of your decisions You know, what happens if we win, what happens if we lose you kind of fear maybe a little bit more big decisions and and what will happen and and I think as you get you know as you move through life you worry less about you know what happens if this doesn't work 
And I think if you remove all of that sort of fear and anxiety and the consequences, you just think, what would I do if I knew it was going to work out? Rather than what, what, what will I not do because I think I might fail? It's, a, it, it's subtle, but it's pretty powerful. And I think the older you get, the more you kind of move to the, you're not, it's important that, that, that what if it doesn't work out? You're not reckless, but I think it doesn't hamper you so much in terms of your ability to make decisions um, as you go along. Certainly, uh, wisdom comes with experience. I guess obviously you've been talking about that. You, you've been on the siege, I would say, over the last year or so. Do you think able to turn that to your own advantage? You've been able to use that in your own psychology. Yeah, I, yes. Well, I've certainly tried to, and um, and I think. As I say, when you know to, to to the guys, when there's a you know a real, if you're on a if you're on a personal best, get yourself a, a real tough competitor, a fierce competitor that you really really you know respect and fear a little bit, and then you're going to get a personal best. Most people will. It's going to challenge you. You're going to you know it's really going to up your game. So I think in, in adversity, sometimes you can use it to your advantage. You said, okay. Or what am I going to? How am I going to respond to this? What What's the reaction I'm going to have? And um, you know, for me, it was one of okay. Well, I'm, I'm, we need to be successful. Um, you know, I'm determined to be successful, even more so now. So the challenge had maybe through with the media, etc. You know, thanks to them, in some respects, you know, it, it's like well, okay, great. It's really, really pushed me last year to become even more driven, more determined to have a successful season this year. Um, which is um, hopefully what's happened.